Hey guys, before we get started tonight, I just wanted to say uh, we are still doing our GoFundMe uh, campaign to kind of help keep the show going. So if you could, go to www.gofundme.com slash cheap seat reviews. Give anything you can. It'll help out the show. Uh, if you donate up to $25, we will invite you onto the show. You can pick a movie and we'll do it and we'll review it. And it'll be a lot of fun. So please, if you can, donate to Cheap Seat Reviews. That's GoFundMe.com slash Cheap Seat Reviews. One more thing. Let no man call us crazy. They called Hitler crazy, but Hitler wasn't crazy. He was stupid. You don't fight Russia and America. You get Russia and America to fight each other. And destroy each other. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is Cheap Seat Reviews. Hello, and thank you for listening to Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. This is episode 130, and today we are talking about the sum of all fears. I am Sean Allred, and joining me tonight is Andrew. Don't text, talk, don't text, Talk on the phone and drive through hell, Jimison. Guten Tag. <laughs> there it was. <laughs> you had to figure out what language he was going to go for. Um, and uh, and Sam, please tell me one more time that smoking is bad, Vector. Yeah, I've got a cigarette machine I need to deliver to your house. Um, <laughs> where should the delivery guys put it? Uh, I'm not going to respond. <laughs> up your ass no um in 2002 did we still have cigarette vending machines was that still a thing in 2002 i don't think it was it, it, it's, i don't remember it seems like like that seems like something that died in the 90s you know like i don't know it's yeah just, that's that just seems very strange to me but anyway it doesn't matter um nope. Uh, unfortunately, we are without uh, Cornelius tonight. It's just that time of the year where um, all f- well, all four of us are in the uh, education field, though we're not all of us teachers. Yes. But it happens. So, um, um, sorry. It's just the Three Stooges and not the Flaccid Four tonight. <laughs> the Flaccid <laughs> Four? Yikes. I, don't, I, I don't like that at all. Well, I was going to go for Fantastic Four, but that sucks even worse. Uh, <laughs> I think we could make it better. No? You don't think so? One way or another. Yeah? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I saw know. an article the other day online that, that mentioned, uh, you know, there the two of those stars of that are willing to make a sequel. Really? And uh, the gist of it was, uh, no. <laughs> just, just just go away. Uh, just, you know. Um, no. I like that. <laughs> no. No. We're, we're done. Yeah. I don't know. That... So you mean like so stars of like the newest one that came out? Yeah, oh, like, uh, the girl and the, um, well, the two. God, what's his name? Um, Michael B. Jordan, uh, Invisible and, Girl, and the stretchy guy. Uh, oh sure. Well, I'm not sure their name. Uh, well, Kate Mara is the uh, Kate Mara is yep. the the lovely, attractive uh, female. I have no Ooh. idea what Stretchy McStretch Pants was. Um, I, I just don't know his name. He was in that amazing uh, drummer movie. He, he oh yeah, Whiplash. Whiplash. Yeah, he's that's in. the only thing that he's done that's really good. Uh, well, he was in something else, wasn't he? Yeah, he was in like the Fault of Our Stars and you, whatever. I know it's a, like, a, like I said. Yeah, I know. I knew that's <laughs> yeah. where the joke was going, but uh, that movie <laughs> was successful for for what it was. Um, you know, you know, chick flick, whatever. But it was, you know, again, it was successful for. Yeah, and he was in. He's also in the um, them there. Uh, what are they called? Um, crap! It's the movie, the dystopian future movie that I kind of make fun of. Oh, sometime. Uh, just uh, the, with with feminist girl. Um, um feminist uh, girl. 
Yeah, she's like she's like doesn't shave her armpits and stuff. Um, really? Yeah, she's weird. Uh, uh, Sh- Shane Lean Woody is the Woodley is the actress. Yeah. She yeah, about she, Tomorrowland? No. No. Um, um, it's like that weird... It, it tried to be oh, the next yeah, 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 yeah. but it never... Um, I can't remember the... Divergent. That's what it was. Divergent. Divergent. Thank, Thank you. you. I couldn't yeah. remember that name of the thing. <laughs> um, he's in that also. So good for him. Yeah. You're in several bad franchises. Congratulations. Um... <laughs> Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but who, who, but none of them were in this movie, which is what matters. So, uh, like I said, some of all fears, 2002, some of all fears. Uh, if you don't know what that movie is, uh, hopefully I've stalled long enough for Andrew to be ready to read. CIA analyst Jack Ryan must thwart the plans of a terrorist faction that threatens to induce a catastrophic conflict between the United States and Russia's newly elected president by detonating a nuclear weapon at a football game in Baltimore. Uh, wow. Could they get, I wish they could have done a little bit more alliteration. That would have been better. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, good for them. All right, yeah, so that's uh, that's actually kind of the movie for the most part, right? Um, Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, there's a few more steps in it. Yeah, there's some steps. You know, there's some Germans and some other things. And um, I don't know. <laughs> we'll talk about all of the things that... It's funny, I... Well, we'll talk about that. In a I'll, we'll get there later. I'm just going to go ahead and say this. Uh, Andrew, had you seen? Has has everyone seen this movie before? I should say. Yep. No. no. A while ago. No, no. So you haven't. This was your first time seeing this. First viewing. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. oh this will be good. So we've got two veterans and a, and a rookie. All right. So what? So Andrew, you go. Your first, sir. Your initial thoughts on seeing this for the very first time with your fresh eyes. Okay, I had seen all the other Jack Ryan movies. Uh, but I had not seen this one, so I was kind of looking forward to it. Um, I fell asleep twice, <laughs> um, and that is not a not a joke. I watched it for about fifteen minutes and fell asleep, Aww. and uh, and then so I picked it up and watched it again and had some distractions. So I started watching it from the beginning a second time, fell asleep again, um, and I made it about thirty minutes through that time. Uh, so I I picked it up and watched it. So I have seen it all the way, way through twice um, just in the past, you know, three or four days. Well, wow. uh, but uh, it's one of those that, you know, I've said it before. If, if something can't keep my attention long enough to keep me awake, then it's probably not all that great. Uh, and so uh, I really feel like part of the issue for me was, uh, was the main character, and had they had anybody else in this role, which we can do our little uh, game later where we uh, choose a different cast if we want, but uh, I really think that was part of the problem for me. And this this story wasn't as great for me as the others were. Okay. Um, uh, okay, <laughs> Sam. Uh, this is uh, several viewings in. Obviously, this is not one of the um, more uh, well put together Jack Ryan movies, but it, I, I still think it had some good. Uh oh, Sam. Yeah. Oh, it had some good. What? Sorry, Skype picked up on us. It had, it had some good moments. Okay. It, it wasn't all bad uh, in my eyes. Um, I, I really enjoyed seeing the beginnings of Jack Ryan and seeing kind of how he gets into the bis- position he's in, even though it just seemed out of nowhere how it would happen. It, it, you know, it's uh, um, I, it just seems strange to me that somebody uh, in Jack Ryan's position would all of a sudden be basically second in command in the CIA, um, mainly because he doesn't want, I don't know, he doesn't have a, a go-to guy or something. I don't know, it just seemed weird to me. But, uh, you know, the movie I really wanted to watch out of this would be a movie about, uh, what's his name? Not Leif Erikson, Leif uh, Shriver. Oh, Leif Shriver? The, yeah, I enjoyed his character and wanted to, him a little bit more in this. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. He, yeah. I thought he was funny as a guy who doesn't really want to do what he's doing, but he's doing it anyway. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, I don't know. I, it's interesting, you know, the decision to actually blow up Baltimore – 
um, in a nuclear attack was pretty brave. Yeah. Um, I haven't read any books. Is this based on a book? It is. It's based on the book called and, The Sum of All Fears, yeah. And do we know, I mean, did they, they actually did that, I guess, in the book? Well, we can go there now if you want. In the book, they actually nuke New York, and yeah. it's not neo-Nazis, it's Arab terrorists. And, oh, yeah. Well... But and, this is 2002, right after uh, yeah, 9/11. This, and yeah, they... this is yeah, yeah. We are literally 12 months removed from 9/11, and so, but, Goodness. um, and this is not only in the trivia, but um, surprise, surprise, I own this on DVD, and um, <laughs> in the uh, behind this, in some of the the making of the movie, the director came out and said, we made the decision in the script before 9-11 to change the terrorists from Arab to neo-Nazi because they were afraid that, um, one, the kind of Arab terrorist kind of, we've done that too much. Um, yeah. You know, and uh, and secondly, he actually didn't believe, he, he felt that it would be unbelievable that Arab terrorists would find a way to get a nuke into this, to the country is easily as it seemed to have done in this movie so that's why they changed it now originally when they were filming this like 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 pre-production is when 9 11 happened so originally they were going to nuke new york they were going to nuke manhattan and then they're like hmm too soon so we moved that's why they moved it to baltimore um, um so anyway there you go that's kind of that there did that answer your question? I think it did. Sam? I, I think that... <laughs> I, I know we're waiting on Sam, but... Uh, <laughs> I think that Baltimore just is a poor choice. Uh, you know, if you're not going to go for New York, which is what every movie ever does, then, you know, why not D.C. or why not uh, Orlando or, uh, or Los Angeles? Chicago, maybe. Baltimore, to me, sounds really small. I mean, not small, because it's a big city, but it's like, who who really would think a terrorist would go, oh, Baltimore, let's go there? Well, um, should we pause the show for Sam? <laughs> I, I think I, his computer has restarted. Oh, it's his 1010 restart, right. Yeah. All right, so we'll pause our show. All right, so we're back in. We're back. Sam's computer, uh, unfortunately, is managed by other people and has <laughs> to do things. All right, so what we were saying was that, Andrew, your point was that why Baltimore? Like, why not a larger city? Um, right. Wouldn't it be because it's right next to D.C.? Um, well, the only thing I can think of is, um, for the purpose of the movie, is why did they move it to Baltimore instead of why not New York, is that they had already established... Maybe they weren't Ravens fans. Well, <laughs> of course, the team... <laughs> this is very true. There's actually a lot of um, trivia about the, the teams, like they were, who, they were, who they were actually playing and stuff, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to read it because it's kind of boring. You have to be like an AFL, NFL, CFL like nerd to really care. So you go look it up on your own if you're all three of those things. But to answer your question, Andrew, I don't really know. I mean... I don't really know if there was a reason why it needed to be there. Um, so, and maybe they maybe they thought, you know what? We always bomb New York or it's always L.A. So let's pick a random city that the president would be likely to go to for a Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know? Um, now, the president yeah. would probably be in a box seat, not like right in the middle of the field or in the crowd. I found that kind of strange, but... Um, you need what if what if they uh, I guess they could have um, like assassinated a foreign dignitary and then known that the president would be going to that funeral. <laughs> oh, you um, mean London has fallen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, okay, sorry. Yeah, that. that <laughs> <laughs> though, though, spoiler. Um, <laughs> Wait, I haven't seen it, <laughs> jerks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, um, we well, I think that you know they needed an American city. I think it, there's more of an impact that well, that the, it's the, an actual American city. The point is also that it's an attempt on the president's life. 
which was the point, yeah. is that they were trying to kill the president. That's why they delivered the cigarette thing to the stadium there in Baltimore. Not, it's not at the stadium, but it's there at the docks at Baltimore. Like, they knew the president. Yeah. Like, oh, the president's going to be at the Super Bowl, so we should go at the Super Bowl. So, um, um, though it looked kind of warm there for February in Baltimore, just saying. <laughs> You know, like it was you know, an indoor uh, arena. Uh, well, there's, there isn't there, mm-hmm. but it seemed very, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying sunny. like, yeah, very sunny and like Jack's, you know, or Ryan, whatever, Affleck's walking around in like a light jacket. I'm thinking that's Baltimore in February is cold. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Sam, Which, did that you... was a nice members only jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, did you do your your thing, your initial thoughts and all that stuff? I can't remember. It seems I... so long ago. I think so. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I enjoyed it, but it's not, you know, setting the world on fire almost. Except that it literally did, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do remember you saying that. Okay, and I'm, then I kind of did mine where, like, I, I own this on DVD, but that doesn't – that necessarily doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I, I, I buy movies sometimes. I admit sometime. it, you're a hoarder. Uh, not a hoarder, but – You're a DVD hoarder. Um, I've gotten a lot better about it. Um just because the Blu-rays are a little more expensive, um, and I don't, I don't want to buy. I, I refuse to purchase DVDs now. I will only buy a Blu-ray. So, yep. Um, so I've gotten a lot better about it. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so this movie, um, it didn't do well uh, in the theater, or um, it's. Uh, I don't think it did. It got a six point four on IMDb. And I think it made a little money. Yeah, I mean, it was a $68 million budget, and it grossed... Let's see what the worldwide budget, or worldwide gross was. Um, well, according to Wikipedia, it did okay. Yeah, I'm looking for... Well, well worldwide, worldwide was it, $193 million. Yeah, nearly $200 million. So, yeah, it did all right, but for some reason... It actually did better than Patriot Games. Um... Uh, well, that's not surprising. I mean, a little bit later, 2000s, you, you do have Ben Affleck and Morgan Freeman. And, and I think in the 2000s, Ben Affleck was, like, he was kind of at the peak, right? Like, he... Yeah, that was near the whole, <laughs> what was that, Pearl Harbor and in, and uh, yeah, like, Armageddon. Well, yeah. this was right before Daredevil, so... Right, exactly. And I think Daredevil... <laughs> right before the end. Yeah, well, I think yeah, Daredevil so... was kind of like like a decline for him because then he did like a bunch of bad movies for a little while. Um, and I think, Geely. yeah, like I think Argo kind of pulled him out of, or not uh, Argo, the town kind of pulled him out of this taboo of like, Oh, Ben Affleck making another bad movie. And all of a sudden the town comes out and goes, Oh, not only is he good in it, but he directed it and it's actually really good. And then Argo comes out yeah. and they go, Oh wow. This guy is actually, we forgot how talented that he actually is, you know. So um, that actually makes me only excited simply for the fact that he's going to be the directing the next standalone Batman movie. Let's uh, hope. And I, I, I really think that he is a better director than he is an actor. I think that's true as well. Um, now, having said that, I have not seen The Town or Argo, and I feel really bad about that because I actually have Argo. Argo's on, pretty good. I have it on my DVR. Um, along with a bunch of other good and bad movies that I just, we've had time to watch. We just forget that we have it on the DVR, you know, like we've had life of Pi on our DVR for like two years. Oh, um, I love life of Pi. Uh, it was like when we first got direct TV, we had that like free three months of, uh, HBO and we just downloaded, you know, just recorded every damn thing we could. And <laughs> we just left it there. I mean, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, what does matter is the sum of all fears. Um, so here's my biggest beef with this movie. I'm just going to go and start the show off with this. This movie, to me, is so unbelievable. I have a hard time staying with it. Yeah. <laughs> and what I mean is, like, so you, so you have to look at the other, and I'm, going, I'm intentionally doing this. We're going to uh, intentionally compare this to the other Jack Ryan movies because they're all kind of based on the same source material now the newest one shadow recruit isn't based on a book specifically it's just kind of based on the character jack ryan so 
maybe for that we can kind of push that one to the side and do the other three movies. All of the other three movies are kind of not simple, but like they're what's the word I'm looking for? Like they're the plot is it's like a minimalistic plot. Yeah. Because it's it's not so complex that that it doesn't need to be that complex. Yeah, that's true. Know, that's not what I'm trying to say, but you're I right. I know what you're... Yeah. Like, the world that they operate in isn't massive. Does that make sense? Like, like oh, Hunter, I see what you're saying. Hunter yeah. Red October, the world is at two places. The Dallas and the Red October. Right? And then all the other stuff yep. is just kind of inconsequent. Not inconsequential, but like, it, it gets us to the, the point. Uh, Patriot Games is... You got the, the terrorist thing that happens that kickstarts the movie... And then, yeah, we kind of bounce around the world, but we basically are just with these one, these you know, the, the redhead and the two brothers, you know, the Sean Bean character and then, the, you know, other guy, right? And then, and then the house, right? And then the sum of all, not sum of all fears, uh, the, the clear and present danger, it's basically Harrison Ford in a room with that really cool machine that was like spinning around and picking up files out of his computer. And then you had the other team, William Defoe in the woods. But for some reason, this movie, like we're in Ukraine or we're in Russia, like for some reason it felt too big. Maybe, maybe that's, maybe I'm, I'm doing a poor version or a poor explaining it. Um, I don't I know. understand what you're trying to say. It just, it seemed, and maybe that was the point. I don't know, but it, I don't know. It didn't, it, it seems... I see. I never got that 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 part of it. Okay. You know, to me, it it seemed a little extreme when the the basically it left our worldview when Baltimore was blown up by a nuclear bomb. But I don't know. It just it's it's a worldwide. I mean, basically. Well, okay. Let me gather my thoughts here. Okay. You've got Russia. Yep. You've got United States. You've got um, a place in uh, near uh, Israel. Well. Yeah. What else was there? Well, you've got you got the Ukraine. They were in the Ukraine for a little while. Um, you've got um, well, I guess you're right. Maybe my argument's not valid on that point. I don't know. Just <laughs> and that's no, fine. But I, no, no, it's fine. I, my, I guess here's my real problem. It seemed real easy to nuke Baltimore. I mean, real <laughs> yeah. easy. You know what I'm to saying? To get it into the dock and yeah. And it, I would hope there's some better. Uh, defense against that because that's yeah it's just super easy like if it's that easy then why aren't people doing it to us all the time you know i just yeah um and and are we leaving up the are we really leaving the fate of the of our civilization up to a guy who writes books for the cia i mean it makes a good movie but shit you know (laughs) that's that kind (laughs) of that's kind of scary you know i want there to be like 30 of those guys not him um, yeah. if you don't make a movie about 30 guys, you make a movie about him. Uh, maybe that's my problem. Like, so like, uh, well, that's kind of like, um, uh, zero dark 30, you know, they made this movie where it was the, the redhead was re- you know, Jessica focused Chastain, on, yeah. yeah, as the one who found him, but it was really, you know, hundreds of people and yeah. man errors that, that came together to find him. Right. right. So, uh, you know, I kind of see it as that. Yeah. Yeah. As well, the the biggest, my biggest escape from reality besides the bombing of Baltimore, mm-hmm. was the fact that Israel would lose a, a nuclear bomb and not figure out a way to get it. They go find, or, go looking or, for it. Yeah. Go find it. Yeah. Or 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 anything. Yeah. I mean, you can't just. I mean, does that happen? And if so, that is scary in itself. Mm-hmm. Well, you do know, remember the story of the uh, the the nuke that dropped in North Carolina, and it was. Um, only by the grace of God that it didn't go off. Yeah. You, you heard that story? Uh, if those of you who haven't, Google it. It's pretty fascinating. It was during the 50s, I think, uh, 50s or 60s, there was a, a plane that had a couple nukes in it, and they, somebody accidentally like sneezed and hit a button and dropped one of them, and it landed in a, in a body of water in North Carolina. But by it, it was by a, because it was a faulty fuse or whatever is the only reason why I didn't detonate. And so the only reason why we're able to record here in North Carolina 40 years later is that somebody built a <laughs> shitty bomb, you know, <laughs> like, um, uh, anyway, so 
But you're right. But we knew exactly where it was, you know. Uh, yeah. Until they went and found it. So you're you're right. The fact that I will say this, and I don't know if I don't know the director very well, um, uh, and I not mean just because I haven't met him, but I don't know his work. Phil Alden Robinson, huh. um, uh. and he has done such things as he did Field of Dreams and Sneakers. Well, I feel bad now. Oh, Sneakers. Yeah. Well, in Field, of, Field Dreams, of Dreams. Like, yeah. Yeah. like one of the greatest guy movies ever. And then Sneakers, which I love. Um, and there's actually, knowing that now, which I didn't know then, there's actually a reference to Sneakers in this movie. Uh, he did an episode of Band of Brothers, and then he did this movie, and then a movie called The Angriest Man in Brooklyn, uh, which is a comedy. Yeah, that's George. Uh, that's, uh, oh, that's, uh, that's, uh, what's his name? Um, Robin Williams did that movie. Anyway, he mostly does write. Well, not, I shouldn't say mostly. He does some writing, some producing. Anyway, what am I trying to say? Where's I going? Oh, <laughs> my, my point was that, um, what was my point? Damn it. <laughs> Um, uh, you're talking about not believable. Yeah, it's um, just not believable, you know, but like not just the fact that it was super. Oh, yeah, you were making the point that it like you could lose a bomb, right? I guess it yeah. seemed. Here's my point. There we go. Finally. Gosh, like America in the world of this movie is the only good country and everyone else are friggin idiots. Like, <laughs> like Russia Although, is Russia is run by a bunch of like just. Like it's, it's components of those countries, though. The, the Russian president is actually trying to do the, the good thing. Right. Well, the Russian president's and, a good dude, but like, but in this movie paints their country in the light of like, we're just a bunch of cowboys, and this general wants to go off and, and bomb Chechnya. Woo! Let's do it! You know, like, that's, <laughs> that's not how it works. Now, I like the, pa- the fact when old man, uh, he's like, hey. McGillicuddy? Yeah, old man McGillicuddy, he's like, hey, you want me to shoot them myself? And he's like, just do it quietly. Like, pfft. Probably puts a silencer on the gun and will actually go kill those generals. But I mean, <laughs> that again, that's more Russia, right? Like if if that were America, they would be court-martialed and there'd be a public sentencing and blah, 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 blah. But no, because Russia is crazy and dark and it's always snowy, even though they filmed this movie in the summer. It's, uh, uh, you know, we're just going to, I'll just it's shoot them. It's, it's Russia. We'll just. Let's, let's, it's those tropes. It's Russia tropes, oh, you know, yeah. it really has is. to be sunny, has to be gruff, has to be uh, just nobody gets along with each other. Yeah. Um, Everyone's I'm sure, angry. did they show any vodka? Was no bright colors. Vodka? Uh, no, I don't think anyone was drinking. Yeah. There might have been a bottle of vodka like in their war room, but their war room was so yeah. dark you couldn't see anything. Like everyone was, was in the shadows and... Was that the Russian war room? Yeah, because the because the American war room okay. is on Air Force One, where it's all bumpy and like, oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay like the worst turbulence ever. Um, I, I got there were several times that I just got really confused as to what was going on, who these people were, and it, I don't think it was because I fell asleep. I literally just legitimately had no clue what was going on. Right. Uh, the the scene where the uh, the German dude uh, who he's talking to the Blue Man Group out there in this room full of blue people. I had no idea what that was right. or who they were or why he was talking to them. Yeah, like uh, were they all pro Nazis or um were they uh, I, yeah. I don't know what that was. Yeah, was this like a neocon no neo Nazi convention, you know, like <laughs> there was a contest for somebody who dressed up like the best Hitler look alike and who here has the best Hitler mustache? Right. <laughs> um, all right. All right. Qu- quick, funny side note. So the way he talked the whole movie, right, with that that accent you did, Andrew, which was pretty good. That very very soft spoken. You heard the the intro clip. I did a um, uh, corporate AV where I was running sound for uh, Siemens Group, which is uh, an energy production company, and it's a German company. So it was like the state of the union for their company, and ten people were up on the stage, and nine of them were German, and they're all wearing super expensive suits, and none of them would let me clip the microphone thingy to the uh, the upper part of the lapel of their jacket because that was the expensive part. So they kept moving it lower <laughs> down where the buttons were, so they was moving the microphone far away. So I'm like, they're all sounding like this far away from their microphone, 
and they all talk very soft, and we are, we are here at the Siemens group. And like you couldn't understand anything they were saying. And their handler comes up, and he's like whispering in my ear. He's like, you must make them louder. And I'm like, I can't. Look. And I, I pushed the volume up, and then the feedback, and then like, then they're like yelling at me, and it was awful. The only guy you could hear in the room was the American, who was like, listen, y'all. We making some energy and it's gonna be great. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't sound like that, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, my point is, is that we're Americans are all loud and Germans are soft spoken. That's my point. <laughs> now I just hate, now all the Germans hate us. That's okay. Our our UK buddies still like us and our Canadian friends still like us. I haven't pissed them off yet. Um, I don't think I have. Um, so yeah, I just yeah, I was confused too, Andrew, with that. Again, and I've seen this movie a bunch, probably five or six times, seven times maybe. I saw it in the theater. Uh, I, I, I saw this movie in the theater with our buddy Andrew Lejeune um, huh. in college. And he walked away, and I remember he was freaked the hell out. He was like, dude, what if that had actually happened? I mean, <laughs> like us in Russia, I mean, we're, we're the two most powerful countries in the world. I'm like, well, China's kind of powerful too, but I see your point. But yeah, he was uh, a little, he was a little freaked out. It was it was interesting. Um, and then Thor came out and changed his life. No, anyway. Um, <laughs> sorry. And then he came out of there like, what if that really happened? Yeah. And like a, a superhero fell from the sky. And he had a magic hammer. <laughs> I'm I'm freaked out. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> A lot of pagers happening for 2002. Thought that was weird. Um, I love me some Morgan Freeman. He was great in this movie. Uh, I, I do want to focus on some of the positives I did like about the movie. Um, I, I thought Morgan Freeman was great. Like he had some comedic moments, which were really good, which you don't get to, to see from him much, you know, because um, he's usually playing these super serious roles. Uh, I liked his little bits there. I love James Cromwell as the president. He, of course, is our largest Star Trek connection of the movie. Um, was he fat in it or something? N what? No, no, <laughs> not as in like he had the most weight of Star Trek. No, I'm just saying he's and we've seen him in several movies before. He was in Eraser, and I'm trying to think of something else that we've done that he was in, but uh, I feel like we should have seen him more. Um, in fact, this is only what like our second Affleck movie, right? Yeah, this, this Batman, is, Superman, oh, yeah. I remember, in fact, I think we made that point in that movie, that, that episode, right? We were like, man, how have we not done more Affleck movies? Have we? Well, we oh. saved $15. Oh, no, 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 wait. No, of course not. He was in um, uh, the Gwyneth Paltrow uh, Shakespeare in Love, and he was oh, also yeah. in um, uh, Good Will Hunting. So this is like our fourth Affleck movie. So Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, he this was, was the first one where he, or no, second one other than Superman, where he's he's actually a main main character. That's true. Yeah, this yeah. He he was better in Shakespeare in Love. Yeah, well, he only had like four yeah. lines in that movie, which makes it better. Which is why he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I remember right, Andrew's not a big Affleck fan. I love him as Batman. I think he's the best on-screen Batman we've ever seen. Yeah, but I, uh, anything else he's ever done is awful. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but. No, I would. <laughs> I know I know you would. I'm just saying I wouldn't. I thought he was fine in this movie. I thought he was good in I thought he was great in Goodwill Hunting. It seemed like a natural character for him. Yeah. Like he wasn't even acting. That's just how he is. He's just a Southie. That's a yeah. that's talk for the, the that what Boston. you know what really uh what really did it for me was like the last scene of the movie. Um Oh, what, it's, it's picnicking on the lawn. Yes, and the <laughs> just the way I thought I was just I think it was when I was dozing out and I was just listening to him speak, and I thought, God, I want to punch him in the face right now, <laughs> just listening to his voice. <laughs> oh, poor Ben! I know, right? It he just is, saved the world, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Nuclear he, apocalypse. Yeah, he freaking killed a dude with almost killed a guy with a chain. He and that guy reminded me of freaking. Uh, I'm going to keep going back to this guy, but he was the, the, the sailor, the, 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 the Russian guy from, uh, yeah, from the Punisher. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, where's Waldo from, uh, the Punisher movie. He reminded me of that. Exactly. Guy. Oh, it was great. Yeah, I thought the same thing. That are all on the same page there. 
<laughs> All he needed was a sailor outfit. He's uh, perfect. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> that guy. Uh, he, he, he's a trope too. But anyway, um, this movie did have a lot of tropes. It was a big old trope uh, of I did enjoy um, finding out who the Soviet, I guess, I guess Russian now. Yeah. Um, yeah. The uh, counterpart. Are you, are you showing your age there, Morgan Sam? Where, you're like, where you think more of them as the Soviets than the Russians? I can't. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Back in 1989, <laughs> when you were still 30, you know. Was, no. <laughs> Sorry. Um, hey, listen. I had a house in Florida with a bomb shelter, in case Cuba decided to uh, to bomb us. So line them up. Yeah. That's crazy. You say that because that's like the direct line from Hunt for Red October, right? Yeah. We had a house yeah. in Florida, and I helped my daddy build a bomb shelter because some lunatic parked 150 warheads off the coast of Florida. Um, or so a underneath our homes. stairs, the 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 door to it was underneath our stairs. Hmm. Oh. Crazy, duck and cover, uh, or flash and cover, or whatever it's called. What were you saying, Andrew? What were you saying? He, hated uh, ben Affleck. he wanted to punch him in his pretty little mouth. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, because he's a 12. Oh, give me a break. Come on. What? My my three year old just walked into the room. Hey, Declan. What's up, buddy? Um, my thing is knocked out for now. Okay. I need. Okay. I knocked out on my bed. You fell out of bed? No, the tent knocked out on my bed. The tent fell down on your back? Yeah. What? <laughs> Is he dreaming? <laughs> no. Okay. We'll go get back in bed. Go ask mommy. All right. Go go talk to mommy. <laughs> Don't take my socks with you. What are you doing? <laughs> Jesus. Good night, buddy. I love you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shut the door, please. And we're back. <laughs> Declan, go to bed. Shut the door. All right, hold on. All right, good. All right. and we're back. Uh, I have no idea what we were talking about before, so I'm just going <laughs> to... just uh, This episode has been great. So, uh, we were making... Actually, we, I know what we were talking about. We were talking about how Andrew loves Ben Affleck. Um, oh, yeah. And all of the things that he's in. In fact, uh, Andrew has a poster of him over his bed right now. Yeah, it's on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, it is actually. So you can above his bed. Yeah. Look up at him. Well, he goes and gazes at the stars in Ben's eyes. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so speaking of uh, Ben Affleck, yeah. I'm looking here at cast overview, first build only. Yeah. He is not even on this list no. until you get down to like twenty five or so. Yeah. For some reason, uh, twenty I, I, maybe. I thought it did like order of appearance or something, but. It, Maybe yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, but. it it is weird how it's done because I was doing, I was doing the same thing because I was looking for Bridget Moynihan. Is that how you pronounce her name? Yeah, the hot girlfriend. And I was like, where is she? Um, because she is that the hot girlfriend and Tom Brady's baby mama. So uh-huh. good for him. I guess. Wait, what? That's Tom Brady's. Gis- no, Giselle is his wife and the mother of his. I think if they have any children together, I don't know, but. He and Bridget Moynihan dated for a while, and they had a kid together. And oh. he, a boy, and he lives with her. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she's just kind of referred to as the baby mama, Tom Brady's baby mama. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Also in John Wick. She is in John Wick. She is the dead wife. Spoiler. Mm-hmm. She's also in Lord of War, and um, she's an iRobot, which I really like. And, yeah, I do too. And the Blue Blood show, she's been on that a bunch. She's been a regular on that. She's in a bunch of stuff. She's good. She's a good actress. And she's hot. So, yeah. you know, there you go. Absolutely. Um, I think she was like a model before she like do- like got into acting. Um, anyway. Uh, huh. Yeah, it's funny. The, I just clicked on her, pa- her IMDb page. The four things we mentioned iRobot, Blue Buds, Lord of War, and John Wick are, are, are things there. <laughs> oh, she's going to be in John Wick Chapter 2. 
I probably as a, again more um, ghost. Uh, yeah, she's in Battle Los Angeles. I didn't know that. What is she? In? Oh, she's oh. the. Um, she's like one of the female the victims that they try to save. You said what was the noise for, Sam? Uh, I don't like the movie. You don't really? I really don't. Oh, why? No. It's just it's I don't know. It was stupid. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Mm. I like it. Just, I just didn't get it. I, I I think I just did, never got into it. And it was just kind of boring if you're not into it. Oh, wow. That's a shame. Yeah. No, I, I think it's a fine movie. I like it. I mean, I'm, gosh, it's there, there's a it's a freaking join the Marines PSA. But yeah. Uh, ooh, wow. What are we talking about? I'm sorry. I, uh, Battle, I Battle Los Angeles. Down. It's got Aaron Eckhart. Oh, yeah. Mr. Two-Face. Never, never seen it. Oh, it's actually as far as an alien invasion movie goes, it's pretty good. Um, they basically <laughs> took the Saving Private Ryan view of it, mm. like oh, okay, the shaky handy cam, gritty on the ground. Yeah, um, yeah. From that point of view only, like yeah, it kind of does have yeah. a, the look of a Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, um, they do a couple of times where they put the you see like the point of view of the barrel of the of the gun. You know, they put a little like GoPro on the gun and they do that a couple times, but it is super yeah. shaky. Like. I think I watched that in the theater and kind of had a couple of queasy tummy moments where I was like, ooh. <laughs> you know, like if you've seen What's the... What's going on? Like if you've seen the first uh, 20 minutes of the Hunger Games, the first Hunger Games movie, when they yeah. everything is on the shoulder and you're like, damn, could they not afford like one tripod in in, <laughs> in District 12? Um, it, it's kind of... No, they, could, they were starving, dude. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, I know it is Hickory. Peter had to throw bread to her to, to, you know, get her to eat. Yeah, it it was Hickory, I understand, but, um, Hickory. Uh, We ain't ain't rich, yo. That's right. Anyway, um, still get a tripod. Um, I like the soundtrack of this movie. We're talking about things that we liked. Uh, it kind of, it was Jerry Goldsmith, so it kind of had a, uh, reminded me of uh, Air Force One a little bit, so just that patriotic kind of a thing. Uh, Speaking of. Oh, yeah. One of the final scenes, mm-hmm. and um, you've got uh, douchebag who kind of orchestrated it all, conducting the uh, oh, call the him choir him. music. Does it bother any other person that half? I mean, I'm not a conductor, but I at least know what good conducting is. Mm-hmm. He had no idea what he was doing. That bothers me in every movie. Yeah, like, I mean, you have Jerry Goldsmith there. You could ask him how to do it. Well, he's probably not or, upset, I guess, but. Um, of course, I guess they actually don't compose the music until they see the. Well, he's no, he's not. Well, he so. what he is pretending to conduct. He's just reacting to yeah. music. That's that. Um, that it, it's always in every. Uh, if you ever need an opera, it's always. What is it? It's um, uh, Nessun Dorma. It's always that for some reason. Like it feels like they put that in every damn movie. So he's listening yeah. to that. So one of two things is happening. Either a. Because the scene has no sound, right? There's no, no dialogue in the scene. So they could yeah. have had the music playing on a CD player so he can react to it. Or they said, just pretend you're listening to music and move your hand in a way and we're going to put it in <laughs> post because we don't know what song it's going to be and we don't know, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe there's music playing, yeah. but it's not that part, you know, because it's part of a montage. It's part of a... Uh, a killing montage. Um, and so we don't know what Which, part... which you, I would consider another trope of, uh, of Russians in a movie, too, by the way. I'm willing to bet that every time there's some sort of Russian scene or, or Russians that are a component of the plot, there's going to have to be a killing montage at some point. Yeah. Um, yes, you're right. Sorry. Um, yeah, so, sorry, uh, even at, 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 10, uh, at 11 o'clock at night as we're recording, I'm on call for my work, and I had to answer a text from a student. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this episode has been real fun, hasn't it? Um, so, uh, ooh, shiny. Yeah, right. Yeah, side, <laughs> side note. Yeah. Um, so I'm typing a message to a former student tonight who has sent me a message on Facebook saying, uh, just hope you're doing well, letting you know college is going well. And I said, uh, yeah, hope you're dong well. <laughs> and I was typing too fast and sent it, and 
Thank oh. God for the edit button. Was it uh, a, a female or a male film. student? Yeah, definitely a female. Oh. Was a <laughs> oh, that's that was a little awkward. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. But I think I edited it in time before she read it, so. Uh, <laughs> anyway. So, so <laughs> hope everybody's dong well. Yeah, and we hear yeah, about local great. teacher... Uh, Gets arrested for being inappropriate with a student. Um, well, luckily, luckily it's a former student. Yeah, and so she's we're... in college now, so at least she's eighteen. Yeah. There's none of that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, <laughs> no, but, but Sam, you're right. That thing that drives me crazy. It drives me crazy when they actually have an actual conductor, right? And it's yeah, not, that's worse. Yeah. yeah and instead this of was... it's just yeah, dude, just kind of reacting. But yeah, when it's an actual conductor, and I'm like, could you not have taught him a four four pattern, like? Now, music people that are not music people that are listening to this show are like rolling their eyes, saying "Move mm-hmm. on." Um, yeah, that that does annoy me. Um, he is a good character. We've seen him. We saw him actually in another Affleck movie in Paycheck, not Payback, but Paycheck. Um, okay. Uh, he was the bad guy, and that was where he was the. Uh, Wait, didn't we? Didn't Affleck show up in in an earlier podcast as a guest host? Oh God, no! Don't bring that back. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, we saw that guy and he was I was eating pie. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> God, you and that stupid Affleck thing. Anyway. Um because nobody knew he was Australian. No, nah, no one. That's so strange. Yeah. He's like Hugh Jackman, yeah. he just turns it off whenever he needs to. Um <laughs> And your accent is terrible, by the way. Oh, I love it. Why don't you stand up on your own? They, Sarah has this little uh, pop figure. Um, it's Bella from uh, the the singing. Twilight? Uh, no, from Pitch Perfect. Becca. Oh, yeah? Becca, not Bella. Becca. And, like, she can't stand up on her own. I have to, like, lean her up against something. So I got I got oh. uh, Becca, Ash, and Groot all next to each other. Anyway, um, what a motley crew that is. Uh, okay. Anyway, so oh, uh, piece of candy. Oh, piece of candy, man. We're just, we're all over the place tonight. Okay, ready for uh, some clips, and I'm gonna cook through some more of their stuff. And Born we'll, ready. We will go through. All right. So I mentioned, I teased earlier that there's a sneakers reference. Here's your sneakers reference. So what are you saying? Chapitsky was banging Atlanta Risco? <laughs> I'm just saying Zorkin's putting on weight. Really, I don't know why guys have to reduce everything to sex. It's just disgusting. Oh, I know. That's that's wrong. Wrong. I agree. Disgusting. Write it up. And if he is putting on weight, that might have health consequences. So be sure and get it in the afternoon brief. Oh, and somebody find out who is banging Elena Rishkoff. This is good. So, that, that, that so the woman there talking played Elena Rishkoff in sneakers. Oh. And she was the she was banging. The Russian mathematician, or whatever. <laughs> so that's that's the joke. Um, but anyway, that's a pretty good inside joke, though. Yeah, it really is. You know, like uh, unless you really know. Yeah. Wow. And the funny thing is, is that like again, I own this and I've seen it a bunch of times, and I didn't know it, and I only knew it this time because I read the trivia about it. Trivia. <laughs> and then I, and then when I saw like while recording, I was like, oh, he directed both movies. That makes sense. Um, there you go. Um, here's uh, Morgan Freeman getting to flex a little humor. But I do maintain my opinion that appearances can be deceiving. You're saying I'm wrong? Absolutely, Mr. Chairman. I don't think you're ugly. All right. Um, <laughs> did Ryan take that I got guys? a little... Uh... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, please. Uh, I got a little Lucius Fox in his portrayal here. Yeah, uh, it's very similar in how he acted. Yeah. So let me oh, get yeah. yeah. Let me get this straight. Your boss dresses up as a bat, who beats bad guys up with his bare hands, and your plan is to blackmail this person. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I like that bit. Um, did did Jack Ryan take that guy's coat and tie though? Like. He says, give him his coat tie, we'll bring it right back. And then the, the next scene is that they're like out somewhere in D.C. walking around. And he's still in that guy's coat and tie. He stole it. <laughs> Jerk. Um, Pretty much. Just like he stole the truck from the guy 
um, right after the bomb. Right. He, he had like what looked and like bottles that, of water and medical supplies. And like, yeah. Some, and that guy he did nothing to stop him. He's like, oh, oh, oh. Ben Affleck took my truck. It, that seems cool. No one will need these medical supplies, surely, in this nuclear bomb disaster scene. <laughs> That's fine. Go ahead and take it. It's a Chevy. Um, and uh, are we to guess that this this helicopter crash is what caused his uh, fear of flying? No, because I actually wrote that later on. Like, poor guys had two helicopter crashes because he was in a helicopter oh, okay. crash. Because they mentioned earlier, the girl, the the girl, the girlfriends were talking like. Oh, what's he like? And he's like, oh, well, he was in the Navy, but then he was in a crash, and so now he's a historian or something, right? Oh, okay. Um, so that that's always been the thing, um, you know, that he's was in that crash and whatever. But it didn't it didn't push that this time though, in terms of him being scared of flying. No, not really. But I noticed. Yeah, he yeah. he was seemed pretty. Yeah, the the whole bit about him not wanting to do things because he's quote unquote just an analyst in the other movies is a bigger deal, especially in Red October. Like, yeah, like in Red October, it becomes a punchline where he's like, write a damn memo. Um, but in this movie, he he was like, I, I don't want to go. No, Clark, I'm not going. And then he's on the boat, and then he's like, gives him a gun. He goes, No, I don't want a gun. And he's like, You're just gonna guard my boat. And then he like you know cocks a gun like he seemed pretty willing to do the things that he didn't want to do um but whatever it's fine i liked the establishing shots with the aerial maps i thought that was kind of cool like good job google map um that was kind of cool <laughs> um here's this thought this was kind of funny oh don't be stupid tell her where you're going in fact tell her who you work for she'll be impressed Okay, um, I work for the CIA, and the director asked me at the last minute to come with him to Russia to do a nuclear arms inspection. Hello? That is so lame. Kathy, I swear, it's because of the START Treaty. We get to inspect to make sure they're really decommissioning their nuclear arsenal. Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I love that Morgan Freeman laugh. Just that little <laughs> giggle. It's pretty great. Um, <laughs> this is an old joke, but it's a good joke. I'm a bomb technician. If you see me running, <laughs> try to catch up. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, it's like the same joke. Like, if, you know, the bear's chasing me in the woods. I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to outrun you. Um, That's why I trip you. I know you would. Um, what is this? What? I, would, oh. I would build a pit. <laughs> okay. And put sharp sticks at the bottom. You, you've got you've oh, got all God. that time while the bear's chasing you. Absolutely. Okay. It's chasing you. <laughs> so you, as long as you distract him, we could we could, you know, shovel a pit. What are you gonna do? Pull out a road. By, what are you gonna do? Pull, pull out a road flare and throw it into the woods and hope the bear chases it. <laughs> You see, they don't see you if you don't move. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's fine. Um, it's because it's a Unix system. Um, I, you mentioned, uh, I don't remember which one of you mentioned it, that you wanted to like see a movie about Clark and like his exploits. Here's, here's some really funny kind of grumbling from him, and I, it made me laugh. Clark, so this is three days ago. That shows vehicles here, guards here, and here. I gotta get one of those. <laughs> now, the infrared satellite was in position 34 hours ago and took this photograph. That shows guards here, here. I don't even have email. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love his grumbling. It's great. His app like is so annoyed. He's like, oh, I don't care. You know, it's so funny. I like his grumbling. <laughs> I heard, like, there's a part earlier I didn't capture, but he's like, I heard you took my tickets to the correspondence ball. I always wanted to go to one of those. <laughs> but here's the funny thing. I'm so used to seeing him as a bad guy that the first yeah. time I saw this movie, I, I kept waiting for the flip, right? Yeah, for I, him to turn. He's the double agent or something. Right, like he and Colin Fiore are like best buds, and he's the one that yeah. he's the reason why they're able to get a nuke into Baltimore. 
Um, yeah. I mean, it was it was up until the last scene when he cut the dude's neck off. It was like, oh, okay, I guess he was a good guy the whole time. <laughs> um, uh, so anyway, because he's a bad guy in everything. I've well, ever and seen. just the juxtaposition between Jack Ryan and him, even when the you know the guards kind of come in on him and he's yelling at Jack to to shoot him, yeah. shoot him, shoot him, shoot him and... before he figures out what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just, man, they'd be a great buddy comedy, you know? Yeah. Traveling the, the Siberia, you know, killing. That'd be great. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. I just actually wouldn't mind just a solo movie of just him, but I guess that they, Absolutely. they made it, it's called Bond or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> they've probably made that. National movie. Lampoon's Siberia. <laughs> starring <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Liam Schreiber. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Join John Clark and... Yeah, it's gonna be nice. Um, and then I had cousin to... Eddie. Imagine his cousin <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> Is Affleck cousin Eddie in this one? I don't know. That would be good. Uh, uh, last clip I wrote or got. Somebody asked Mr. Ryan if I can use the phone now. There you go. So <laughs> now that confused me. How how did he get permission to use this phone and continue to use it? You, you mean like group group me back in 2002? Because that's basically what it yeah, was. Yeah, <laughs> and like he he had a room of soldiers surrounding him, including the general that, or whoever finally coming in telling him to you know this private to step away from the he, the well, calm. But well, what he did was remember he walked in and he was like, "Look, I I work for Cabot. Cabot's dead. I just need to get the information." So he basically like you know rank. yeah well not even pulled rank he more like um. You know, I can't think of a, a, a movie comparison where, where, like, where someone basically just talks their way into a scenario. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of a thing. Like, I don't know. I can't think of one. But anyway, he did that. That's how he was able to do it. But uh, the fact that you can't turn it off from there, um, for some reason, that's the point of it. You can't remotely turn it off. That's why they had to call him to go in there and, and stop him. Yeah. Um. And it was funny because the Russians, when, when, when Affleck was dictating, right, and she was typing furiously, and then they, they cut him off, right? He was mid-sentence, and then the Russians were like, oh, they cut him off, and the guy started screaming and running around like a madman. I thought, wait, is that text, like, live? Are they seeing him as she, or seeing it as she, it's coming, scrolling across the screen? I thought it was, you know what I'm saying? Like, That's what I got out of it, like, yeah. How would they know that they cut him off if, I mean, for all they know, he's just taking a long time to answer. Um, and something else or I thought dial was, up is taking a while. Well, yeah, you have to rub, rub some cheetah blood. <laughs> AOL <in there>. is. <laughs> You've got mail. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Ben Affleck's talking to us again. <laughs> the other thing I thought was really funny is like, again, Russia is old and antiquated and, and shitty, and America is great. America, they're talking on these huge com- banks of computers. They had to print that shit out on the other end and read it to the president. You guys notice that? <laughs> Like, yeah. and it, it was funny, Sam, you'll appreciate this. Andrew, have you seen the Lego movie? Oh, yeah, many yeah. times. Yeah, we, Sam and I, we, we saw it in the theater and, and laughed our butts off the whole time. Um, cause we're, More than we should have. Yeah, for grown <laughs> men that didn't bring our children to the movie. Um, <laughs> but in the scene when, when um, Wild Style, um, Lucy, is uh, giving her impassioned speech for people to fight, and when it showed mm-hmm. them on medieval times... He's, yeah. he's reading, like from a scroll, what she's saying. Like that's... this. <laughs> this scene made me think of uh, McFry. Read my facts. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so like that's what it reminded me of. Like she, he's dictating, and then it's like appearing on a script of paper that he's having to read to the president. It's, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because um, even in even in two thousand two, you know, facts wasn't. You know, the most popular thing. You think? I think that's what they went there. He, he is. Uh, it's being texted to that, to another room somewhere, and then the, they print it out and then fax it to the, the president's suite. Yeah. Um. <laughs> all right, and then yeah, that was the last one I I, I got. Uh, grumbling. What? Oh, oh yeah. Um. Uh, is it a Jack Ryan thing that he has to interrupt a meeting full of powerful white men? He did that. I think he seems to do that like in every movie. Um. 
When doing your video diary or manifesto or vlog, don't smoke. You look like a European douche. That was my quote. <laughs> <laughs> that was my uh, my note. Um, I always like. And just version. as a just as a disclaimer, uh, we don't think all Europeans smoke. So if you're listening in Europe, uh, we well, yeah you do. So. Uh, but we yeah, still like you anyway. My, my, my point isn't that if you're a European and you smoke, you're a douche. My point was in this video, because he was smoking while doing his manifesto to, to whomever, I don't know if it was for himself or, or, or if it was his vlog or... Um, we just it, lost our UK listeners. I, 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 think they're <laughs> probably, okay. I think they're probably still with us, because I hope. Um, we never had any French listeners to begin with. I don't so. think so. I, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I think we're still... UK and Canada, uh, Canada. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And a couple <laughs> random like Middle Eastern countries. It's interesting. Um, I liked this version of the national anthem. I like with the drums and the steel and the the percussive. And then they use the last chorus or the last verse of the national anthem, which I think the third verse now has come under fire for being super racist. So um, there you go. Um, I can't ever remember a sitting president going to a football game. Um, I just don't I don't think the Secret Service would allow him to go. Yeah, I know. Oh we've, my gosh. I know we've seen former you imagine? presidents, like former presidents, like yeah. I've seen Bush forty two at a Cowboys game, but that was while you know Barack Obama was president. So, uh, is this movie just a PSA about smoking? Um. I don't care how much I paid for those tickets. If I see the president get rushed off, I'm leaving. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, what? All it, oh, yeah. Here's another thing about Russia sucks is that I'll, literally all it took is for that guy to come in and go, by the way, America did this to us. Blah, go sink that boat. And they all do it. Like, wait, you don't have to have like orders or anything confirmed or written. Just some... Just your general just comes in and yells at you and you go and sink stuff? Like, that seems super cavalier and, again, more... And how did we not have uh, planes that were were in the air to shoot them down? Yeah. I, I, I Wasn't don't, it an aircraft carrier they attacked? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just... Yeah, one, how do they get close enough to shoot missiles without them knowing it? I mean... Whatever. It was a cool scene. I like that big chain gun that they used to blow up the missiles, but whatever. Still seemed not real. Uh, men with egos, weapons and egos, kind of how Cap 3 Civil War happened. Um, what? Oh, uh, cheesy moment of the movie. The moment that I literally rolled my eyes out loud was when they showed a scene of Ben Affleck slow-mo running through the fire to get to the warehouse. <laughs> I that was when I was kind of checked out of the movie. Truth be told, um, uh, no, and then Nessun Dorma was the thing, and then uh, I wrote killing montage tropes. Uh, scary end of the world thing is just a test. Um, cold in Russia, or if you're going to Russia, then you cue the Russian music. You always got to have Russian music playing. Um, something bad is explained by lots of cell phones and breaking glass. You know, like. Something bad's happened, but we don't know what it is yet, and everyone's cell phone goes off at the same time, and then somebody's <laughs> got to drop a wine glass for some reason. Uh, irony death. You know, the guy's like, I heard these things can kill you, his cigarettes, and then, of course, the cigarette lighter blows him up. Um, that happens more in, in movies than I, than I remember, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. Bad guy wants out of bad guy organization and is killed by his other bad guys. That seems to happen a lot. Um... Hero lives long enough just to, for the, the plot before dying. Um, there you go. Um, cool. You ready for some more bad news? Well, I am. And now for some more bad news. Ready? The spray can that Liev Schreiber uses to cut through the chain link fence is supposed to be real life CIA chemical spray known as ice piss. When asked <laughs> if a real can of ice piss could be acquired for the scene, the technical advisor said, quote, I don't want to go to prison, quote. <laughs> uh, the wintry Moscow scene was shot in the summer, so the snow was artificial. Once again, Hollywood making us think that it's always snowy in Russia. I do have to say, they did a pretty darn good job. Well, yeah. But, you, know. you know, it looked it looked real. Well, yeah, CGI, snow. The uh, director, Phil, I, I mentioned this earlier, so here we go. Um, well, 
I mentioned it already, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, Matt Damon has a cameo as a waiter, but his scene was cut from the final version of the film. Um, Good. Talk <laughs> about taking you out of a film. Right. Yeah, it would have been kind of weird to have him come in and do that. I would have been... It would... Maybe... I don't know if maybe the, the movie had enough brevity if, like, he was the waiter and then they kind of shared a moment and go, you look familiar. And he's like, yeah, you do too, or something like that. But, like, because they do that in Maverick, but Maverick mm-hmm. is a, but Maverick's yeah. a comedy. So it works in Maverick, you know, and he and Danny Glover look at each other. Huh? What? No. Okay. Uh, the recasting game. Do we want to play that game? I mean, they've rebooted this movie I, since then. Oh, I do. Oh, okay. So 2000. Definitely. All right. So you're saying, all right. So 2002. We're going to recast it for 2002. I have my list ready. All right. Oh, all right. Okay. Ready. Because literally any of these people would have been better than Ben Affleck. All right. Here we go. Okay. Brad Pitt. Okay. Well, yes. Go. Colin Farrell. I'm going to okay. say I'm going to say no on that one. Okay. Hugh Jackman. Hmm. Uh, a little too old, I think, for... No, not 2002. Parts. I mean, not 2002. No. Okay, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. Too young? And I'm not even a fan of his, but he would have been better than Ben Affleck. Yeah, he would have been good. Amar- uh, Marky Mark Wahlberg. Uh, was he doing stuff then? Was he doing serious... When was the Italian job? I'm trying to think. It was around there, wasn't it? What is it? Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, t- uh, 2003. Yeah, that would have worked. Yeah. And Will Smith. <laughs> a black Jack Ryan. Yeah. I, hey. Interesting. It would have yeah. pissed some people off. That's like, off, uh, but... what's his name being James Bond? That would work. I would love an Idris Elba James Bond, personally. I would, yeah. too. I think that would be fan Um yeah. And people need to get over that stuff. Um, yeah, I think that would have worked. I don't know if Will Smith, just because he's too comedic. You know, He's done some serious stuff. Though. I know, yeah. Seven pounds and the pursuit of happiness made me weep like a crying, hungry infant. But, um, and I am legend. He did that. Too. I am legend is good too. So you're right. But even in yeah. I am legend, he still does some of his own little thing, like when he's flirting with the mannequins and screaming at Fred well, and stuff like that. But I mean, yeah, I think he would have been fine. Um, I think probably of those, my favorite would have probably been. Actually, trip be told, probably would have been Marky Mark, but I don't know if I can buy him as a CIA analyst. You know, like yeah, I understand the Navy component, but part of him being in the Navy was that he was a really good mathematician, and that's how he was able to get into the Navy and then help out the Navy. Uh, he, he's a smart dude, so I kind of this is going to sound super mean, but I don't really consider Marky Mark a smart dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I might just be biased because my brain, every time I think of Marky Mark, my brain remembers the fact that, you know, a year after 9-11 happened, he said if he would have, because he was supposed to have been on the plane that went down in Pennsylvania, and he just missed it because he overslept. He said, if I would have been on the plane, I would have been able to take out the terrorists before it would have crashed. Like, you can't say that, you know. So, like, for some reason, my yeah. brain always remembers that. So, anyway, whatever. Um... Yeah, I mean, I think... Um, who was your first one, you said? Um, Brad Pitt. I think he probably would have been the best. Yeah. Because he can play kind of a nerd, I think. Yeah, and yeah. well, I mean, remember, um, even in World War Z, Oops, he, uh, yeah. he was pretty good in that in terms of being the... Yeah, just the smart guy. The, the smart guy, yeah. Yeah, he's not a soldier. He's not a kick-butt guy. Like, yeah, I think that would have been great. All right, let's let's do that right now. Let's go back and fix it. If only, right? <laughs> Soundtrack grade, exactly. I gave it a, I would give it a PG for pretty good. I liked it. I just thought it was fine. Um, you know, I, um, I liked it. Uh, what did we learn? Cigarettes will kill you in multiple ways. Car bombs, nuclear <laughs> bombs, all kinds of bombs. Um, actually, there was also another PSA. Don't fly distracted. Apparently, when you drop your picture of your wife and daughter and you go looking for it, you get shot down yeah. by a missile. Jeez. Um, Especially when you're carrying a freaking nuclear bomb. Yeah, right. <laughs> I just, uh, I know this is kind of off topic here, but I, I just read a frequently asked question about the film, and it said, the question is, what did Tom Clancy think of the film? Mm. And it says, Clancy heavily criticized the film, 
mainly for its technical flaws. In the DVD commentary with the director, Clancy introduced himself as the guy that wrote the book and they ignored. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, darn. I was looking for it because thinking of a movie with nukes and, and planes and things, it made me think of Broken Arrow. And I, yep. as, as, soon oh, as, yeah. that, as soon as that hits Netflix, we're doing it. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. I just, one of my all-time favorites. It, it's one of the, I mean, Sam, did you ever see it? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, I know I, I, I know I go on about my, my stupid 90s action flicks, but holy shit, that, that's all that movie is. Um, yep. Um, so anyway, uh, I don't think it's streaming anywhere. It's not. Damn it. That's okay. Um, <laughs> we got plenty of other movies to do. Uh, uh, what are we doing? Oh, this thing here. Um. We decided just to go ahead and put um, all five, three, four, five of the Jack Ryan movies in order in which we liked them. Um, now that we've done the entire collection, which is, I think, actually kind of cool that we did that. Um, yeah. And that Netflix afforded us the ability to do so. So, Well, and the movies are so varied. You know, it's, it's you know still Spycraft, but it's yeah, you know, like, all the different actors and all the different stories. I think it... it did yeah. well not being the same thing over and over again. Yeah, the two Harrison Ford ones, I think, were the most kind of like... Same-ish. Yeah, they were kind of the same. They were kind of like um, wrong place, wrong time kind of scenario. Uh, Hunt for October yeah. is more like um, I'm here to defuse a bomb kind of a thing. This yeah. one is more... I'm not action-y because Shadow Recruit's definitely the most action-y. Um, this one was more like man versus Russia kind of a thing, something I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, if only Ben Affleck had been there, then Captain America Civil War would never have happened. Uh, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. If he'd have been there texting both, you know, Captain America and Iron Man, like, hey, guys, you know, you're, you're, you're right. You're both right. Uh, anyway, uh, Andrew. <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, I'm going to start with number five, yeah, which yeah, five is this one. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, number five is this one, Sum of All Fears, the Sum of All Fears. Yeah. And uh, number four, Patriot Games. Ooh. Number three, Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit. Number two, Clear and Present Danger. And number one, Hunt for Red October. Yeah, so, I don't think any of us are going to not say Hunt for Red October is number one. Yeah. Um, Hunt is, is a, an amazing film. Yeah, I mean. My it, gosh. Yeah, and simply for the fact that it, it almost is like it's in our top um, – Top three, like five, isn't it? Top four or five four. of our of our movie rankings. Um, yeah, which says something. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's the yeah, top nine. Sorry, it's it's it it yeah. came in. It tied ninth with Ghostbusters. <laughs> Actually, it tied it tied films. ninth for that's awesome. And with Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway. It might be a little high. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a great movie. Don't get me wrong, but. I know, but like, I, because I, I'm going back in it. It always does it. I go back and look because, and then I go, hmm, that movie's too high in comparison to, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I mean, yeah. Like, should the mummy be above Goodwill Hunting? Mm. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, ugh, my gosh. Some people would actually be really upset if they saw that. Olympus has fallen is above Pulp Fiction. <laughs> that, uh, that, that's, yeah. that's because of me, in fairness. Anyway, uh, Sam. All right, um, I'm going to put the the Shadow Recruit after this one. Okay. Um, a movie that I cannot remember, uh, but apparently <laughs> I reviewed it, um, so it must not have stuck with me very well. Oh man, so, uh, that's a shame. Number five, Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit. Number four, uh, let's do a Sum of All Fears. Uh, number three, Patriot Games. Number two, Clear and Present. And, of course, number one, Hunt for October. For what it's worth, Shadow Recruit is tied for 50th with RoboCop and Star Trek Into Darkness. <laughs> so, mm. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just over Spy Game and under Reservoir Dogs. Mm. Um, all right, so uh, my turn. So number my number five probably would be 
it's probably this movie. It's probably some of all fears. Then probably, well, not probably. I'm gonna say then uh, clear and present danger. Um, then Jack Ryan. Then Patriot Games. Then Hunt for October. There you go. So we're all fairly close, I think. Right? I think we're all. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. the most part. We're around there. Yeah. We all have the same one and the same five, I think. I can't remember now. I already forgot. Um, I mean, anyway. I love going back and looking at our list. This is just great. This is, <laughs> seriously, this is so fun. Like, movie, <laughs> movies that are really, really good, but are really low because. Sometimes it's just because of, you know, the, the, the mood, mood that we're in. in. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Fargo is a better movie than Star Trek Into Darkness. But uh, for some reason, it's, it's, you know, 10 points lower or 10 spots lower. It's just interesting. Um, and it's, like, it's beneath Sahara and Shooter. Like, that, that, those are crimes. You know, <laughs> whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, what matters is, is that rubber will be forever and always the lowest movie that we do. So. <laughs> and that's saying something, Andrew, because, um, yeah. children of the corn, corny gave it a zero. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I think a couple of us actually just voted high just to piss corny off a little bit. <laughs> uh, that's going to do it. I think, right? No. Um, out of 10, out of 10. Um, uh, uh I got, I, I'm not ready. Um, now I'm ready. Um, Andrew. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go 6.145 All right. out of 10. Oh, okay. That's actually higher than I thought, should be told. Uh, uh, there, there's no corny, and he did not send in his yeah. stuff, which is fine. Again, he's super busy, and I understand completely, except I don't because I hate him. That's not true. Um, oh, nah, poor not corny. True. Poor corny. He's... Yeah, anyway. He's making money. He is making money. Good for him. Um, certainly don't begrudge anyone doing that. Sam? I'm going to give this a 5.22 uh, links of chain around Jack Ryan's neck out of 10. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. I was trying to think. Wait, what? Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of about where I am. I'm going to say... Uh, I'm, hmm. Mostly because of Morgan Freeman and Bridget Moynihan, I'm going to give it a 6.0. Just a straight 6.0. Um, What's that? Put us at? Something. Um, what does it put? <laughs> it's a 5.783. Okay. Um, I don't know. Interesting. Where, I don't know where that puts it. Above name. Jumanji. Um, I don't know. Iron Sky. <laughs> Uh, I th I think maybe I scored it a little high. Uh, well, it's it's on paper, so you can't looking. go back. I know. <laughs> and by paper, I mean <laughs> it's digitally on Excel. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I I did the replacements as a six point one, and I actually like the replacements better than this. So. Uh, all right, if you want to change it, go ahead. I'm not gonna hurt my feelings. Seriously. Yeah, we're okay. still live, so. It's yeah. Okay, go five eight. Go five eight. Five five point five, eight. eight. All right, now we're changing the system. Okay. There we go. That changes it to a five point six seven three. Um. Okay. There we go. Uh, I, uh, that's gonna do it. That's our show. Yay! Cool. Thanks for listening. Um. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, no email, like I said, uh, which is okay. And um, what are we doing next week? I don't know. What are we doing next week? What are um, we doing next week? Well, I know what the script tells me it is, and I I just I just kind of don't want to do that movie at all. But it's on the it's on our list, so I guess we should do it. Um, and I know nothing about this movie, so maybe I shouldn't be so grumpy about it. Oh, you've never um, seen it? No, I've not seen it. Um, I'm uh, sorry, I missed that. What movie? I haven't said it yet because I don't want to. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, it's worth a watch. It's worth a watch. Uh. It's Adventures in Babysitting. Hey, heck yeah, back to the 80s. Uh, and the babysitter must leave their safe suburban surroundings and head for the heart of a big city to rescue a stranger friend. I don't know where I put it. Is whatever. it still streaming? Oh, I don't know. Um, I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, Once again, ladies check. and gentlemen listening to the show, you get to do we all the... We are doing our... Uh, we, we do back... all the, yeah, we do all the stuff that we should do 
off air, on air, because we suck. Um, <laughs> At least we're honest about it. Uh, adventures. <laughs> yeah, it's still streaming. All right. Uh, it's got Elizabeth Shue in it. The second okay. um, girl from your uh, Back to the Future movie. She wasn't in the first movie. She was in the second and third one, though. Which is weird, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a huge crush on her. I don't blame you. She's uh, she's very attractive. She she could be my babysitter any day. Oh, that's awkward. Um, there you go. That's it. So we are going to do it. I'm saying it now. Adventures in babysitting will be our next episode. I can't wait. Uh, maybe I can't. I don't know. Uh, we've got some other cool stuff coming up. Please. Um. Uh, I guess we're going to do it. Um, we're going to do it. No. What we're going to do is, uh, Sam, I want you to uh, throw up on the on the website, and I'll throw it out on the, on the, on the Facebook and the Twitter. We're going to let you guys pick our movies for Halloween. We've done oh, this yeah. for the last, uh, the last two years. So, and month, Chad's not here to, to ruin the voting. Yeah, so the month of October, I'm going to let you guys pick. Um, please send us your emails. Um, if If it comes down to... You know, we're getting in the last couple of weeks and we've not gotten any emails, then we'll do we'll just pick four movies and we'll do maybe a poll for one of them. I don't know. So we'll just see how it goes. Uh, but please send us your emails, your tweets, your Facebooks, whatever, to ch- tell us what movies you want us to do for Halloween um, because we think that's kind of fun. And uh, I can't <laughs> I can't wait to find the next Frighteners. Um Yes. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, or the next Hot Fuzz. I want to go watch that again because it's streaming again. Um, that's going to do it for us. we got a bunch of other... Netflix just put a bunch of other really cool stuff streaming. And September, they're dumping a whole bunch of like MCU movies in there. So Heck yeah. I don't know if I want to turn this into an MCU podcast, but I, I got a feeling that... There's going to be a lot of MCU movies that we're going to be doing. So um, uh, maybe we should get Andrew on for Thor. Anyway. Um, yes. Yeah, get Andrew. Just so he can finally be a part of the joke. Uh, that's going to do it for us. Uh, I'm finally going to hit this this button here. Crap. What button is this? <laughs> I did not mean to hit that. <laughs> How did I even do that? <laughs> oh, I know what I did. It's I, I actually hit the the M button instead of the space bar, and that's the only M word that came up. That's hysterical. <laughs> and Corny wasn't even here for it. Damn it! Waste of a good Malachi. Oh well, he'll listen to it in the car or something and it, it it crash. Gets freaked out, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Sorry about that. All right. Um, the other cool news is, if you're listening to this, then you've obviously already found your way to listen to the show. But you can now listen to us on iHeartRadio. That is real and official and very cool. So, if you Ooh. if you um want to do that, just just, do- just search uh, the Flaccid Four on uh, iHeartRadio. <laughs> yeah, or Cheap Seat Reviews, which is what we're actually called. Um, visit our website cheapseatreviews.com where you can check out past episodes and. Things like that. Uh, like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Cheap Seat Reviews. Follow us on Twitter at Cheap Seat Cast. I am at Sean J. Allred at Suniji16. Is Sam at Johnny Darko16? Is Corning at A. Jimison? Is Andrew? Please send us your emails to Cheap Seat Reviews at gmail.com. Again, we're, we're depending on you, the listener, to tell us what we're going to watch for Halloween because um, we need you to. Uh, you can leave us a voicemail 704 271 4290. I think that still works. Um, and we will play it on air, um, you know, because because we will. Uh, and that's going to do it for us. So uh, that was fun, guys. I enjoyed that. So we should do it again next week. What do you say? Okay, good. Because um, you're Sounds contractually like obligated to. I mean, that's not true at all. So on behalf of Corny, who is not here, um, uh, this is Sean saying thanks for listening. Oh, I, I guess I should also say on behalf of Andrew and <laughs> Sam and my uh, three-year-old sure. who walked in while we were recording, this is uh, Sean saying thank you for listening and good day, afternoon, evening, and night. Bye.